Coming up on this episode of Bro, You Even Talk Pinball, Toy Story 4 has been revealed. It's out. We played it. Talk about that a little bit. Got news and updates. And then finally, what everybody in the world has been waiting for for almost 30 years is a review of Williams No Fear. All then and more coming right up. And now, the Hall & Oates of Pinball Podcasting, Nick Lane and Kevin Manny of Buffalo Pinball. Whoa, boom shakalaka! It's us. Welcome to another episode, episode 69 of Verdi Even Talk Pinball for Saturday, July 2nd, 2022. I'm Kevin Manny. That's Nick Lane. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? Yo, it's Nick's- your boys. <laughs> it's, your, it's your boys, Nick and Kevin. We're back. Uh, like, and- hit like, and subscribe. Uh, sub we're gonna, and, and we're gonna like. be influencers. We're influencers. Here, here, here. Wait, 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 shit wait. out of pinball. Uh, where is it? Uh, where is it? Oh, uh, here, here it is. Yo, what's up, pinball players? There you go. That's, That's everybody's gonna love. Everybody's gonna love that intro. <laughs> what's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, to uh, July. Actually, happy almost birthday, America. Uh, we've almost made it to 250 years, so we're we're getting there. <laughs> we're doing good. Um, so far. Uh, how's your summer been going, Nick? Yeah, it's been going. I got COVID a couple weeks ago, so boom. That was Check. that was fun. I still got a nice COVID cough that's lingering. So maybe you guys might get treated to that. We'll see. We got nice. a good microphone, so you can really enjoy that. I got my um, I got my out of the way back in December, so ho- hopefully that'll be it. But you never know. You never know with this stuff. Coming around. Yeah. Good. But uh, yeah, I've been I've been enjoying it. I've been playing a ton of disc golf. Me and Jeffrey and Martha. We're like we're gonna be on tour next year. <laughs> i like it so is there a uh what what is your uh is your rise is there like a go-to course for you guys around here or do you try so, it up different ones um that's uh, that's a good question so buffalo is uh buffalo's pretty good in terms of like options for courses i'm actually going today to a place called bond lake which is uh last i checked it was like number 33 in the world oh nice um, it's like a half an hour from here um there's a course it's like a 12 hole course in a park that's like five minutes from us so we kind of go all over uh, we have certain ones we like but um yeah disc golf is awesome it's free it's like the poor the poor person's uh golf and i, I grew up playing regular golf and like if you go on i know you're not a golfer kev but like golf is like stupid expensive that like around's like probably 45 50 bucks like you know on low end average um disc golf is free nice you, have, uh, you know a disc is like anywhere like 10 bucks you can 30 bucks you're you're good all right well th- that's your uh, disc golf update you got your can you show your latte larry's you. mug i like that mug oh shit that's right <laughs> that's, that's good that's good it's appropriate that's it is how I, how I how i fucking roll man <laughs> that's how nick operates all right so uh why don't we kick it off with some with some news here here's the tip it's the latest pinball news so hot it's on fire all right, the big news of the month is that Toy Story 4 has been revealed and released by Jersey Jack Pinball. It's number number seven from Jersey Jack. Um, it's a, a Pat Lawler game with uh, Joe Katz, who's the lead on code. Uh, Pat Yowse, uh, John Yowsey is the uh, artist, and it's, uh, it's Toy Story 4. So um, I think I, uh, I was, along with everybody else, a little disappointed when I first saw the theme. Everybody was just thinking Toy Story, and then it's like, oh, Toy Story Four. What is uh, <laughs> the fourth one out of all of them? Um, but I have one uh, here. Let me see. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can. Uh, you can't see it. It's over there. It's just past Tron. Um, it, it's it's a it's a fun game. So I actually really like the theme now that I own it, and I've so I've had it for about two weeks now. And so the the game is set in the carnival of Toy Story Four. So um, I had forgotten that this, that movie came out in 2019. So it's pretty recent. I was thinking it was like in the 20 oh the aughts, you know, before 2010. Uh, but no, it's it's a fairly recent um, movie. I went back and rewatched it to kind of get ready for for the game. And 
I forgot that they actually so that one of the features of the game is the the screen on the play field in the kind of back corner there and you can play a mini game of pinball in there and ever I was like that's weird it's it's like Jersey Jack's first video mode but it makes sense in the theme of the game because in the movie they actually go inside a pinball machine I had forgotten that uh so you it's they go in the inside the machine called Tiki Party and that's the machine you play in the little mini um video mode so that that's actually a pretty cool uh theme integration i think and you you don't play it long like pinball inside your pinball is like whatever but um it's over quick and in your back end of pinball and you get a you get a cool multi-ball out of it if, if you complete it so i like that um the game comes in two packages let me let me switch back here so you guys can see um the limited edition and the collector's edition the the collector's edition has a topper it's got red powder coating versus the blue on the uh on the le uh let's see enhancements this is from pinball news enhancements on the collector's edition are mostly cosmetic with a different art package on the cabinet back box and back glass while the collector's edition has an animated topper a mirrored back glass well oh yeah um the the see uh, the le has a back glass but not mirrored um external cabinet lighting rad cals cabinet decals interior art blades Custom shooter knob, additional RGB lighting, sparkle effect on the playfield, and additional Bo Peep speech callouts. Uh, art for for the game is by John Yossi. Display artwork and animation by John Paul Duin, which is amazing as always. And sound design is by Unlock Audio. So I I didn't know who that was. Um, you get that Bo Peep. <laughs> you get the Bo Peep. So Unlock Audio know. does a lot of video game audio packages, including um, a game I play the um, um, the Killer Queen Black um for consoles yeah. and arcades so uh, that's cool um so i got this we played it on the bro show uh nick what are your first impressions of toy story after what four or five games right yeah it's a pinball <laughs> it, is, it is a pinball machine way too rich for my blood zero interest in theme um it's got that jersey jack polish it didn't to me it, it didn't seem like there was any amazing toy in it ironically enough like it's got the jump ramp which is which is fine i mean it's a nice smooth shot i like it i like how the posts come up um but there's nothing really cool in the game that grabbed my attention but i had fun shooting it you know like i, I thought it, it it shot well it's kind of an open play field um you know that's very descriptive not necessarily a, a take on it mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was it was fun to play like I, I i had a pretty good time playing it like the theme does Absolutely nothing for me because I'm a, a, an adult, um, <laughs> technically. <laughs> I mean, I'm an adult, and I really like the theme. So, I, did, you, uh, <laughs> did you beat the game yet? Uh, no, because it, the game's actually much harder than people think it is. It's okay. relatively easy to get to meet me at the carousel the first time, but there's actually two paths. So to, to beat the game, you have to go back there a second time as Buzz Lightyear. Um, and if you really want to do it, you want to complete all of the tasks on your way there, not just not just start them, right? So um, you could just start all of the things and get there. And then, so the, the Meet Me at the Carousel is cool too because you can, you can get there, but it's, it's a long mode. So to actually get through it too is, um, is a challenge. So I've gotten there twice. The second time I got there, um, I got further in it, but still didn't beat the first path, uh, the, the way path of, of Meet Me at the Carousel. So it's actually been a good... So I've been playing the hell out of this game. I love it. Um, it's, it's a great carrot on a stick kind of thing where it's like, you know you can get there, but getting there is not easy, but you're always like pretty close. It's like, oh, if I had done one or two more things, I could have gotten there. Let me try again. Um, and it does a good job at the end of the game. Um, it puts up on the screen the, the main, like, six tasks that you're supposed to do. I think it's six. Um, and it shows how many you've accomplished, how many you started, and how many you missed out on. So um, even the first couple times you play it, it's like, oh, I should, those are the things I need to do. I Let me get back in there and try and do those things. So um, it's a good mix. It's not as – the rules aren't as complicated as some of the other JJPs. It reminds me more of, like, a dialed-in where things are a little more straightforward. Um some Jersey Jacks can get really complicated and, and intricate. Um, but this is, this is one that's, I think is more approachable by, by most folks that just step up to it. Yeah. This seems like it's a game for the masses, like not necessarily the pinball nerd. And it's not to say that, but I, I 
probably spending time with them. And that's, it's not to say that there isn't stuff in there for the super pinball nerds, and you're, you're obviously having fun with it, but it, it definitely, I think the audience isn't necessarily us. Is that fair? Uh, I, I actually would disagree with that. I think I think it's designed to appeal to a wider base, but I think there's enough in there for the the hardcore like um, you know tournament player, the 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 folks who have been in the hobby a long time, the be- the better players. Because um, to I mean, Carl streamed Toy Story four, and I think he got to the second path, but it was like a two hour game to get there, right? So it's like you gotta. You gotta really play this game if you want to get there most people are not going to be able to get to the end of this game um but uh, there's a lot up front where it's like oh there's this ramp that pops up that i want to shoot so there, there's like cool satisfying stuff for the first time players um but if you really want to dig into it um you you uh you have to you have to play it for a long time so let's see uh toy story 4 uh what else what else can we, uh it's expensive like you said it's there's no low end um standard edition game anymore um there is just the limited edition and the collector's edition the limited edition is twelve thousand the collector's edition is fifteen thousand so no uh no small change here um but i was i was thinking about this too i wonder if that was an intentional move by jersey jack to um to you know, if you raise the price, your profit margin is going to go up per per unit, and demand is going to go down. So, in theory, they're going to turn more profit on and have to build fewer machines. Do they end up with more more revenue in the long run? That uh, in that way, it, it's to be determined. But you know, if they if they can't meet the capacity of you know they were running Guns and Roses for two years, so. Um, if they want to get on a cadence of doing two games a year, they're not going to be, be able to keep doing that. And if they can't hire enough people or um, they don't have the, the production capacity to, to do that, then maybe this is trying to find that. Maybe they're just going to positioning themselves as the, the high end uh, players in the market. You know, they're the high dollar um, manufacturer. They're just not going to make as many, but they're going to turn a higher profit on each, each machine. That was, that, so that was just my thinking on that. Um, well, you got an MBA, so if you don't like Kevin's <laughs> assessment, go fuck yourself. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Um, all right. Anything else regarding Toy Story? I'm gonna, so I've been streaming it. Um, I did it. We did the bro show, and then I streamed it again this past Monday night. Um, so if you want to see it in action some more, uh, tune in on, on Monday nights. Although this next Monday night, I've got something new that we're going to be streaming as long as I can get it all set up and installed right. I got my weird owl, so we're going to talk about that in a little bit, too. Um, just showed up this morning. Um, what's next? Oh, we got we got this is amazing pinball machine that everybody is clamoring for. The next home pin, it's Spinal Tab, so it's on the production line. They're making four of them. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they might sell all four. Well, there's, there's like 12, 20 shaker motors here, so maybe they'll sell 20 of them. Uh, this is it. Take, take your pinball to 11. This is this was our first glance at the uh, the play field. Um, I should. Uh, are, are you seeing the stream, Nick? Can you see this? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. So this is. Um, yeah, you can see. So th- apparently they have a, a high speed getaway as their like machine, their reference machine in the, the factory. And you can totally see that in those inserts. The inserts in the middle of the play field looks just like high speed. Um, it's got this weird light bar thing on the left side. And there's actually, let me, if I take it over here, this was the, uh, from the Look pinball. Look at that light bar. <laughs> Look at so that. Ch- That's like a, you know, like they're like, let's stick a fluorescent lamp in the game. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. They, w- they went down to Home Depot and got a got an LED bar and stuck it in there on the side. Um, so this is a picture from Pinball News and Pinball Magazine, their, their monthly email update. This was our first like head on shot of the of the game so it's weird too because they have a big lcd screen in the back and a dmd so they have both for some reason and then that's just like, really appealing to anybody who's like i like lcds i like dmds like well you can have both with home pin <laughs> you, you get it all <laughs> you, I, I i feel like they're just gonna like put a bunch of movie clips on the big screen and that's it and do the rest on the on the dmd i don't know it's so i have no interest in this game but it was there's 
there's not much pinball news happening every month so this is one we can talk this about what you get guys this is it's what you get fault. this is why we do it once a month this is because this is all you get we're committed to once a month show if you don't like the content well it's probably because there isn't good content so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna power through and be troopers we got we got other stuff we're gonna talk about but we get we gotta check off the boxes when it comes to news um oh good god speaking of of more garbage news um here let's go back here it's a if you if you ever like I, I need a pinball machine based on nft garbage here you go it's it's board ape pinball for some reason this is from uh nap arcade um they it he made it close to the content he didn't make it just yeah 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 he, I'm, I'm pulling this news from nap arcade uh it's, he says, last night an unusual NFT themed pinball machine named Escape from the Megaverse made its public debut at Barcade in New York City. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out exactly what this is. I think that that says a lot. What we're all thinking, what is what is this? Uh, so it it looks like the layout from their, any of their private label games where they're like, hey, uh, can you make me 50 pinball machines? They're like, yes, we have this layout. You can have it, and we'll customize it to you. So it's like Star Wars or Spider Man or uh supreme any of those games uh, the home versions of those games um but this one is different in that it has the big lcd screen in the back it also has stern insider connected oh my god insider connected which i guess makes sense for a nft themed pinball machine um i don't know like how many of these they're gonna make or if they're gonna be available to the public um nick is our resident um blockchain expert can you explain what the hell an nft is uh, first of all, I want nothing to do with NFTs. I want nothing to do with all coins. I want nothing to do with shit coins. None of that shit. Um, but yeah, I, listen, I, 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 I work in that industry, not the NFTs. God, no, I gotta go take a shower, but I've asked people who are into it and I've not been given a satisfactory answer. Like the only answer that they ever give me is like, they like the community. Just like we like the pinball com community. Like they like the community. Okay, fine. But like, yeah, this is just, this is, this is puke. Um, this is, I, I think it should be theme specific where, you know, your score, you start off at like a million points and your score just goes get down over time till you get to zero. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's on brand like that. That'd be awesome. Or you get some, some other sucker to, to buy the pinball machine off your hands for, yeah, for more than yeah. you paid for it. Listen, um, I, I, I've not heard a good explanation of NFTs. That's the best one I got from somebody who's really smart. So I, I, I listen, if somebody wants to prove me wrong, I'm, I'm fine. I am. I like to learn and listen, but it's, it's whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> it's okay. whatever. Uh, so I, this is kind of a, like a recurring theme with, um, with people who buy these bored apes, uh, NFTs, they like are turning them into things to, it seems like a way to boost the value of it. So, and Seth Green was like making a cartoon out of his, but his got stolen. His got hacked and stolen, and he had to buy it back. Hilarious. And uh, there, there was just an Eminem and and a Snoop Dogg video that ha actually has a pinball reference in it, but they like turn into their board apes in the video and things like that. So it's all like to me, it smacks of people just trying to boost the value the value of this NFT garbage that they own <laughs> in some way to try to make them more a pet valuable and attractive so they can resell them and, and and retain the 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 uh value of what they've invested but i mean that that's all i got nft pinball that's that's pinball man and yet that exists and uh ballarama does not and <laughs> deep root does not so uh, there's still a it, the irony of something that like doesn't really exist and but has been manufactured into now that it's actually a pinball machine versus deep root and ballarama like there's a lot to wrap your head around there yeah, I mean, it, at least this is like a thing that exists that you can own and will, you know, you can transfer yeah. it like pinball machine, uh, the the property that's based on, like who cares? But there you go. And there's NFT pinball. Uh, what else? <laughs> so this this isn't news, but this is a this is a discussion point. I, I thought we would we would all appreciate. So this is um, this came up in the the Buffalo Pinball Discord uh, a couple of days ago. So it's a hot topic on Pinside. Uh, Great Witch John is looking for a hundred thousand dollar whale investor for a licensed game. Um, <laughs> let me just read you the top post on this. It says, uh, "Looking for a person with money." It's for, hey, let me squeeze this in so you can see the whole thing. Uh, looking for a person with money for a prototype, fully working and pimped out pinball game. It will be one of a kind licensed game that either moves into production or dies to become the one and only game. 
David I'm Fix sold. Of- Where can I sign up? <laughs> Let's go. David Fix of American Pinball was told what I am interested in at the Pintastic show last week. Okay, cool. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Um, he would get the first crack at it if he's interested. Well, if he's interested, wouldn't he have said so and decided to, like, bring it on and not have you out here looking for $100,000? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, if not, it gets floated to other parties or dies as a one-of-a-kind prototype. That's twice he's talking about it dying, this project dying. Um, this can realistically done with a tiny group of people with the needed skills. I already, or I have people already lined up for this to happen. Please contact me privately about this and it should be finished March, 2023. All right. So let's start, start your timers, March, 2023. So less than a year, they're going to have this done. Uh, all he needs is a hundred thousand dollars of your own money to, to throw at this project. And the, the, the thread replies are good. <laughs> I, well, I, I like how he like throws out like I, I I've shown this Dave Fix. Now I've known Dave Fix since 2011. I've spent well over 100 hours with him. Now Dave is with American Pinball now. If, if this was any good or there's anything, Dave would have like snatched it up. All right, like potentially, right? Potentially, right? Like why throw that bit in there? So obviously Dave looked at it and he's not interested. American Pinball's not interested. So. What the fuck do you have? Like, dude, this guy is off his rocker. It is amazing thread. <laughs> it's good. But can we go back? I want to go back to the, the second uh, the second post in this thread. He says, the, there's after uh, people just posted a bunch of uh, GIFs and memes back at him. <laughs> he says, yes, I talked with a knowledgeable person at the show, along with David Fix. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> Dave, I know you're probably not listening, but I would, I would message him and be like what the fuck so basically he's saying dave's not knowledgeable that's right. his words <laughs> that's, that's how he positioned it he's, he's getting he's getting okay. downloaded to hell here too by the way by the oh, way he's yeah you know, he's getting slaughtered in this uh john gray which whatever whatever he's getting slaughtered in this thread uh told me the way to go is the rich people that usually do not post here but see what is going on people know that i can get numerous pinball pieces done and i get a fully working game done $100,000 US is a reasonable goal for a one-of-a-kind licensed pinball machine. If it moves into production, it will be a win for those involved. <laughs> Where's the value proposition? There, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this guy's not a designer. This guy doesn't even have anything. Like, what do you... He has not even indicated he's secured a license. Like, what do you have... What are you selling exactly? <laughs> what the... Yeah. What is this? This is... This is, it never stops, Kevin. Like, oh, this ins- the, there's so many mental cases in pinball. The, this one's good. He goes, <laughs> feel free to reach me personally. And my past, past pinball production for the fast, last 15 years. Wow, I can't read today. I lost a shitload of money doing stuff. Well, that's reassuring for my $100,000 investment. But in the end, a lot of stuff was done by me and my contractors. I have a very good reputation with pinball parts suppliers and those in the industry. Now that I am retired, I will focus on the goal... I always wanted to do a licensed one of a kind pinball machine that may move into production or not. <laughs> this guy goal. just wants to make That's... a pinball machine and somebody just to throw money at him. Like, there you go. Like, what is he like? A don't make a wish kid. Like, this is like not how life works, dude. <laughs> Who knows? But any whale is not concerned about a hundred thousand dollars. If he is a multimillionaire, this game will be pimped out. This is not a J pop harebrained idea. I have a very small shared workshop to get this pinball machine done along with numerous contractors and suppliers for the needed parts. <laughs> People don't get to be multimillionaires for the most part by not caring about a hundred thousand dollars. It's, it's quite the opposite. Like they, because they know where to invest and are good with their money, usually they can get to the point where they are multimillionaires. So this guy is just, this is crazy talk, crazy talk on display for everybody. It's great. Yeah. It's, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Who, if you have a hundred thousand dollars and you're not concerned about it uh, you, you're like elon musk he's like the only one that doesn't care about a hundred thousand dollars i think and even him i feel like he would probably care about a hundred thousand dollars well you just don't want to do something stupid with your money that's the that's the thing like it's not rational there's no value proposition here there's nothing being sold like yeah like a hundred thousand dollars somebody who might be multi-millionaire billionaire like that's not a lot of money for them but they also aren't just looking to burn it and set it on fire right like that's what he's missing just because somebody has a lot of money doesn't mean that you automatically oh just write a check for a bad idea 
<laughs> this is not a J-pop hairbrained idea. This is Wildcat. This is a hundred percent original of my own hairbrained idea. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> oh yeah, pinball industry. So it's sad because we well, it's sad because we didn't have any uh, Ballarama updates this month. Other than uh, they went to see they went to see Hamilton, so that was very exciting. And they're 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 move, they're getting a new house apparently, which apparently halts all production of pinball machines. Um, so it, it's weird because when uh, when Arcade moved from Chicago from uh, Boston to Chicago, JJP didn't shut down. <laughs> he just moved, and they kept working. It's weird. You would think that this is parody, right? You think that this post is parody, especially everything that happens. And this guy's obviously on pin side. He he sees all these other things fall apart. He's aware of them, and then. Boom. I mean, Wildcat nailed it with his with his comment. But no, this is real. These and I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is just never gonna stop. There's always gonna be the ball around. There's always gonna be this John for Great Witch. There's always gonna be the Papa Dukes. Like it's not gonna stop. So yeah. buckle up and enjoy the ride with Kevin and Nick. We'll be there to call them out. And uh it makes for, for fun content uh for the podcast every month. So we love you and hate you all at the same time. <clears throat> Another topic of discussion. Um, which came up following our last podcast was enjoying games without knowing the source material. Oh shit! All right, Kevin, <laughs> hold on. I just I heard my cue. There it is. I'm gonna let's let's, let's go, take like, let's take everybody back to uh, last month when I I dared say disapproving words towards that wonderful game that's known as Halloween. So there's there's a lot to talk about here, and uh, I just want to read. This guy who got triggered, you can go and see the comment. I won't read his name because he doesn't even use his stream. He uses his real name because that's, I don't know, that's how he rolls. God bless him. Um, I'm going to read this. Oh, no, not me. I wasn't just, and I'm trying to use his, like, the way he types. I wasn't just seen on stream playing Halloween and visibly enjoying it and having positive things to say. LOL, GTFOH, what the, get the fuck out of here? Yep, that's what that there is. should be another O, technically. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get the fuck out of here. Not sure how you can honestly review a pin of a movie you've never seen. Oh, uh, oh he's got all caps. A movie you've never seen. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> so the charge against me is that he, this guy is incredulous. Like, how could Nick possibly review a pinball machine of a movie he's never seen? Well, that's an excellent question, sir. How could I? I've been wrong all this time. I How... How can I possibly say Johnny Mnemonic is a good game without watching that movie? I don't know. I don't know. My, I'm going to flip this around. How could you enjoy a movie without playing a pinball game? Don't you? Those things are obviously intertwined. How could you possibly, if you want, like, you say you like a movie, but you never played the pinball machine version of it, how could you fucking enjoy it? How would you know if it's good or not? We're all just left. I'm going to just let that linger. We're going to need a good month. Everybody can think and reflect on this profound statement from this gentleman. We're going to have him on to start reviewing because I'm going to ensure that he's seen the movie first so he can talk about it. All right, let's continue on. <laughs> Some light research in the form of simply watching the movie might go a long way. Thank you, sir. Okay. Also, Nick, the whole in the quote, I only appeared to light the game on stream because I had too many beers is such transparent bullshit. Don't be such a stern shill. <laughs> Kevin, your insights are pretty fair. There you go. Kevin's the good guy. There you go. There you go. Kevin, lo Kevin, Kevin loves it. Kevin I, loves this I, shit. I think, I think my, my insight was uh, <clears throat> after, after two games, that was enough Halloween. I think that was, that was my impression of, of Halloween. Oh, dear God. Oh, the, <laughs> this is just un, unreal. So we're going to spend some time on it because, again, there's no content to talk about. Um, and, and, and I know that people enjoy this shit, so why not? I, I, I talk about it anyways, because I get rattled up when I see this. Um, let me break things down for you, sir, because I think this is a, 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 like a, a teachable moment here. I, I think that we can learn something. First of all, I don't think I was praising Halloween on the stream. I was basically saying, this is not a complete piece of shit like everybody said it was. That's essentially my vibe. I'm also playing it for the first time at a collector's house, trying to not be a total asshole about this guy's new game. Now, he's, he's become a good friend of ours, and he's, Patrick's awesome, and Patrick can take it. He's a big boy. I can tell him his game is complete shit, but also I want to try to be open and, 
and, and, and appreciate it. Okay, so if you think I'm being positive towards it, I would disagree with that. And also the people in the spooky thread basically said, no, 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 Nick was not really saying good things about it. He just said it wasn't a complete piece of shit. Um, and then afterwards, by the time we did this, the podcast and talked about it, that like some time had passed and I got to think about the game. Second of all, as Kevin and I painstakingly say all the time when we give impressions, it's not a review. Okay? Clearly it's not a review, review in your book because I haven't seen the movie, so I have no basis if it's a good game or not. We can just move on from there. Um, I want to also commend people in spooky threads because most people, you know, I, 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 I slam the game. Most people are kind of like, yeah, Nick's, whatever, Nick's kind of right, and, and, and we still like the game. I think the way you approach that is saying, okay, you can say, Nick, here's where you're wrong about the game. Like, you said this about this rule. I don't think you understand how that works. You know, point out what I'm missing, not on my character, right? Like, don't attack me personally. Tell me where I'm wrong. You didn't tell me where I'm wrong other than I didn't see the movie, all right? Which is this, no one, that, that's nonsense, okay? It's great that you like the theme. And there's definitely a market out there for Spooky for people who are just happy to have a pinball machine with their theme. They see some scenes from a movie, the, the arts there. That's per Dude, that's perfectly fine. I don't want to stop anybody's enjoyment of that, okay? Like, that's cool. Just, just own up to that. No big deal. I don't want to ruin your time. But the game is garbage in terms of um, basically shots, layout rules um the the audio and visual production is garbage and here's the funny thing <clears throat> um we actually try to get patrick on the show today to review it i'm gonna maybe pull up his text when i get a moment and i can have some snippets from him and his his quotes he said i can share but i was over there a couple weeks later all right and this game kevin's been out since when jeez uh, it's it's got to be going on a year now right let's do a year yeah, because it was over Halloween there. time last year, right, when they announced it? Yeah. I was at Patrick's a few weeks ago, and, he, and he's like, what game do you want to play? I was like, oh, let's try Halloween again. You know, maybe I missed something, right? So we go and we play a game. Patrick's the first player and the second player. When I get up, it, the game starts me on ball one as the second player in the middle of the mode that Patrick was on. In the middle of the fucking mode he was on. What? The game's been out eight months? And that's the, that's the software where it's at? Dude, that's insane. That is insane. Day one, if the game was released by that, that's pretty bad. But the fact that that still exists, the fact that we were playing, um, the game had tilted out when we were on the stream and you're still playing, it's, you know, it's not lost on me that the guy who's coding it is a 20-year-old referred to as Bug, because that game is buggy as shit. I'm not <laughs> slamming the dude. Like, it's his, he can code a pinball machine. I can't. But it's not on the level of a Stern or, or Jersey Jack game. Not even, not even close. Yeah, they've also got, they're making, they have this tiny team of inexperienced people making two pinball machines at the same time, trying to code and, and design rules around two machines at the same time. Um, I just looked it up and um, they announced it on July, almost exactly a year ago. July 5th, 2021 was when they announced this game. So yeah, they've had a year to polish this up and it's, it's got a ways to go. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's 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 complete garbage. And let me let me say this: last year around this time, Kevin and I played um, um, Led Zeppelin Pro on location, and then I got on. And I talked about how I was disappointed, and I talked about what I didn't like about it. And then some people replied to me, and they're like, "Hey, Nick, I I, th I think this is a good game, and here's why." They actually gave me examples and things to focus on and look at. And um, guess what? I end up owning that game, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. Right? That's how you can respond to something. Take on my criticism and show me where I'm wrong. Tell me that there's not a lot of bugs in the game. You can't, okay? Tell me that the, the rules aren't basic or the, uh, the, the audio's bad and, and, and so on and so forth. Or just say, listen, Nick, I grant you all that. I'm just happy that there's a Halloween pin. It's my favorite movie. So um, I'm not super nerdy about pinball like you are, dude. And I'm just happy to have it at my home. And I'd say, that's awesome. 100% respect. I'm glad that Spooky exists to make these titles that maybe Stern or Jersey Jack isn't playing. That's great. But I stand 100% by the other things I said. And, and to my knowledge, that is the only game during the last year or so that has gone down in value. That people are dumping this thing like it is fucking toxic and it needs to be buried 10 miles under the earth. They don't want it. It's bad. 
There's currently Patrick, Patrick. Cur- currently 29 of them for sale on on Pinside. Uh, a lot of them they're like selling their uh, pre-order mm-hmm. spots for way under what they what they uh, what they bought it for. I think they were like two thousand dollar pre-order spots going for like nine hundred dollars and things like that. It's crazy. Yeah, like no other game, to my knowledge, is is tanking like that. Everything's going up. So I don't have this weird minority opinion on the game where I'm coming out of left field and people are scratching their head. Like I'm right in the wheelhouse of everybody else. And also the stern shill. Hello. Have you been around? I shit on them all the time. Like, but here's the thing. I, I'm not a stern hater and I'm not a stern fanboy. When they do something great, I praise the hell out of them. And when they don't do something that's not great, I slam them. Not a show. I think you need to go and look at the definition. Am I a show for JJP while they're a sponsor? So we don't review their games. Because, yeah, I'm shilling a little bit for them, but I also don't come on and, and review a game and give it a 10 because they're a sponsor. So there's a conflict of interest. So anyways, I strive to be super uh, straightforward and honest. And you, you're always welcome to debate me on my points because I get things wrong, just like I did with Led Zeppelin. And I respect the hell out of people that actually engage me on my points because you can actually change my mind. And then, uh, yeah, there you go. So that's coverage. So let's see what Patrick says. Um, Let's see. Well, while you're looking I, that up, let me just make the point about subjectivity too. So it's like we have an opinion on things. It's like th- these are works of art. You know, people have different favorite movies, different favorite bands, different favorite flavors of ice cream. This is not an ob- objective thing. You there are, there are objective things that we talk about, like there's bugs in the code or the the video is grainy and things like that. But then there's like, do you just like it or not? Uh, and you can't define that like they he can't convince you you like this thing if you don't like it right there might be things you're missing that might turn you around but for it just people inherently like different things <laughs> and that's okay you it's okay yeah i was calling out like um so here's a case in point right this is like something you can is is objective right like i was saying there's no tilt sound right i had no idea when i was tilting people in the forums like yeah there is one and patrick confirmed that there is one it's just it's so poorly executed that I had no idea or it wasn't loud enough. You didn't know either, right, Kev? You were playing the game. You didn't know. Jeff, nobody knew. Okay, so that's a, that's the problem. So, yes, there is one. It's just so poorly done like the rest of the game that it's not obvious and you don't know. Okay, now we've gotten somewhere. We, you know, that's, that's where I'm at. So, Patrick just um, quickly said, um, I originally seriously considered eating the 2K deposit, but then I thought, Surely the code will improve, and surely I'll lose less than 2K if I decide to sell. Whoops. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if Patrick, the, the, the friend of ours and host of that uh, bro show that we did, he's selling his because he wants it out of his house. Oh, he dumped it. He dumped that thing. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> so there, there's your Halloween update. So, uh, yes, it's possible to... Enjoy oh, Chris, the printer wants to hear me talk up. Yeah, I'm happy to talk up. Thanks, Chris, for bringing that up. Um, coming up on two years of owning it, and I'm still playing the hell out of it. It's probably the one game that I, if you look at the amount of time that I've put into playing it versus the length of ownership, it's it's probably number one based on that alone. Nice. There you go. Thanks, thanks for bringing that up, Chris. And, and Nick likes Led Zeppelin, and I don't, and it's okay. You know what I mean? He's we're still like talking. Things. We're still, still talking. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he managed, Kev. I don't know. Imagine that. Um, all right. So that's it. That's so bottom line, you can, you can play a game without knowing the source material. If you, how would you, well, I guess that, that plays into the, uh, the unlicensed themes. Like how, how would you ever possibly enjoy an unlicensed pinball machine? I fucking if, hate them all if, because if there's you, no movie to attach I, it to. How do I oh, know no, if what's I like going it or on? Not? Fish tales, no idea what's going on. Oh no idea. I, I just, I, I, I talked to Robin from Pinside. I was like, can you just have a rating that says I doesn't have a movie? I cannot possibly rate this game. <laughs> no. Work on that. Sorry, sorry. We, we need a unlicensed top one hundred because nobody could possibly rate those accurately. All right, so that's a that's our our breakdown of enjoying games without uh, knowing the source material. And there you go. Here's a stern shill Nick Lane on Twitter. Let's go. Let's go over to there. This is a good, this is a good one. So <laughs> Nick on Twitter posts my my new inbox Mando from at Stern Pinball Inc. lasted almost two weeks before breaking. 
comma, the comma is important, a new personal best. And then Stern Pinball Inc. liked it. <laughs> I don't know who's managing, <laughs> I don't know who's managing your socials, uh, Stern, but you, you need to... You know, lay off the liking at all of your mentions. And then, so it's a tough day. They were in like the liking groove. They had like boom, boom. They like liking it. It's like that meme of the person click on the computer doing like the thumbs up <laughs> like that. Yep. Like, they're like job well done. Time for lunch. <laughs> Look oh, at all this shit. engagement we're getting. And then, then later they unliked it. But because the internet is forever, we have a screenshot of it. So um, I, I kid, I kid, Stern. The, the, the backstory joke behind that is we were talking in a chat, um, you, Patrick and Matt and, um, so the, the 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 history behind here, if you're new to the podcast, is every single new inbox game that I bought from Stern for more than ten years has had issues. Like I just never had a game where it just never had an issue and everything was working fine, right? So I almost made it to almost made it to two weeks with Mandalorian. I wasn't even celebrating, Kevin. You know, I wasn't even like, oh, my game's working, everything's good. Like <laughs> I did jinx myself because when I got it, I looked at that upper mini play field and I said. Man, I'd hate to have to work on that. So maybe I guess that's enough for the universe to like take a little no and then fuck me two weeks later. Um, so we were talking in chat and um, Patrick's joking. He's like, he's like, oh, Stern probably sees that Nick Lane's got a pinball machine on order and, and messes around with it and sends it out. You know, so then like that happened that same day and Stern liking it. I was like, theory confirmed, Patrick. Here you go. <laughs> so, so um, what was the issue and, and have you resolved it? Yeah, so the issue was um a wire got unsoldered from one of the coils which caused both flippers to stop working on the upper play field and um yeah so shout out to flipping out pinball so both zach and greg greg who's joined it we got the whole straight down the middle team <laughs> behind me you know like this is this is this is dude this is great this is what a time to be alive in pinball so i got them they got my back matt came over last night he not, dude, he's awesome. It, it was a pain in the ass. We got it out. Took forever. Fixed it up. Now it's working. Um, Pinside, also shout out to those guys. People were helping me there. And it doesn't seem like too many people had this issue, but like it just, it just sucks. Like I just cannot catch a break. Um, it's working now. And, and Stern, I give you guys a hard time, rightfully so. Your attention to detail, which is shown by that tweet, is, is at the heart of every issue. But um, they did follow up because I, I did give them a hard time because I screenshot it and then also had a LOL like, are you liking, you know, this like and they're like, oh, sorry, um, you know, they, they, they DM me and like, how can they help? So, um, but you also I called appreciate- them out on the, the play field that they promised you in May of 2021 that you still don't Co- have. Correct. Well, keep that <laughs> saga. Um, they promised me a play field uh, back in May 2021. And I'm still waiting for it. So, you yeah. <laughs> know. The, here's the here's the sad thing with Stern. Like you you uh, you have to you have to like have like a meltdown and start really getting pissed off to get any anywhere. That's the sad and I and despite my demeanor on this podcast, that's n- not how I like to be like a- at all. I try to be patient, and then, you know they will they will push you. But anyways, that's that story. That's a little fun, isn't it? <laughs> we love you, Stern. Uh, never change. What else we got? Um, let's let's talk game room updates. Why don't, right, you, why don't you, you do go this, first? This is, you this is a bathroom one. break while I oh. while you do your game room updates. Right. This is perfect timing. I love <laughs> it. Thank you. Bathroom, You're back. Bathroom break with game room updates. All right. So let's start. Well, let's go over here. And you can see literally like an hour before the uh, podcast, I got a delivery of uh, my Weird Al's Museum of Natural Hilarity uh, play field module, topper, artwork. I got the LE version. So... Um, I also ordered a few extras, including the USB button box, which uh, lets you plug in USB headphones, and I'm going to use it for my uh, USB Wi-Fi dongle uh, on my P3. And I also got the apron art for um, Sorcerer's Apprentice. So I figured while we're while we're uh, shipping stuff, let's get all that in on and one order and and combine the <laughs> combine the uh, the shipping cost on all that. So super excited to have my Weird Al. So I mean. It's only been, I mean, I got Toy Story, what, two weeks ago. So it's been two weeks since I got a new pinball machine. So it's it's about time I got another new one. So there I can, if you're watching live, I can show you Toy Story. It's, it's right over there. Um, but yeah, so that was the, the other big update was that I got Toy Story. Uh, thankfully, uh, gratefully, one of the, one of the first to, to ship out. It's a, it's an LE. Uh, it's in great shape. I've had to do a couple little tweaks to it. Um, 
see the diverter on the left ramp if you watch my left my last stream it uh it was like hitting the there's a plastic housing over the diverter and it was hitting that so i just had to unscrew stuff and and shift the the cover over a little bit and that that's all that um not much else it's it's been it's been doing it's been doing great i've been playing the hell out of that game it had been a it had been a while since i played since i got a new game um the last like new inbox pinball machine i got was um uh, guns and roses which was um tw october of 2020 so but i did there was one more that i snuck in there right before i got um before i got toy story so something had to leave so i a had money and b had room for for toy story so i sold hobbit so rip hobbit it had come down to hobbit and uh and willy wonka and uh my son and i have been playing and I, I left it up to him between the two i was like which one should we keep and uh he said keep wonka so we're keeping wonka for now that'll probably be the next one to go because now i have i have four pat lawler games in my collection now and that feels like too many you're still wonking the donk, dude. It's still wonking the donk. That's right. Did you have um, a lineup of just blue games? They all look the same. That's the weird thing about like Toy Story. Like it looks the same as like dialed in and Wonka. Like if you like glance quickly, you're like, what game is this? Like, uh, there's three different games here. What game is it? Like, you, you're tricking me. There's one game. Pat Lawler has a long history of blue games. If you go back to like Earthshaker and Whirlwind, and there's just he likes blue. And like every other JJP that comes out is blue. He's living in a blue house with a blue window. Unless, unless you buy the LE and then you get red, I guess. <laughs> or the, the CE. The LEs are all blue. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I had, uh, so, I, when I sold The Hobbit, um, I had it up for sale. And then somebody offered me uh, X-Men LE plus cash. Because they saw that X-Men was on my wish list. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I've never owned a, an X-Men and I've always wanted to play it some more. So, why don't we do that? Um and then I didn't know at that time exactly when uh, Toy Story was going to be launched. Like, I knew it was soon. That's why I was making the move. Um, and, like, two weeks later, <laughs> they announced they announced Toy Story. So uh, I had X-Men for about two weeks. Uh, it was super fun. I played it on stream. I would have liked to keep it, but money, you know, money. These, these pinball machines aren't cheap. Um, so I sold, I sold X-Men. Uh, and that moved on to a new home and, and now we got Toy Story. So that was a quick turnaround for, for a couple of machines, but that was super fun. Uh, Weird Al, I, in my notes, I said Weird Al was on the way because it had shipped earlier this week, but it, it's right there. So uh, we're going to be installing that. I have to, as part of that, install the upper left flipper. So uh, a little bit of a project, but I got all the like um, magnetic art that's got to go on there. So it's, this is going to be the first time I'm doing like a full conversion of my P3. It's been it's been in heist mode ever since I got it, so uh, looking forward to to transforming it into an entire new machine for the first time. Um, besides that, I got some new books. We had a uh, Father's Day. I got a, a couple couple good ones that, that you might be interested in. So this is here. Let me let me put it on put it on me so you can see. Uh, Pinball: A Graphic History of the Silver Ball by John Chad. So he had sent us a review copy of this, but it was a it was a PDF. And it was annoying to read, so, uh, and it was really good what I had read of it on the, on the digital version. So I, I was like, oh, we'll put that on the Amazon wish list, and and there we go. I got that for Father's Day. I also got a book on Atari coin op games called Atari Design Impressions on Coin Operated Video Game Machines. This is very academic. This is like academic research kind of stuff. So, um, if you want to get real nerdy about Atari art and and cabinet design and things like that, the opening chapter is all about tempest which is one of my favorite games so that that is that is right up my alley so um two good reading options um so far if you're looking for a little um reading material the other thing i did was uh, you can see discs of tron behind me right there i got side art i got like basically mirror blades for it because that's what the original cabinet had when i got it it had really beat up ones so i got ones that are mirror polished stainless steel they're really baller looking they look really good um really happy with how that came out and i i also moved tron over to the other side so you can i could have my two of my trons uh side by side over there so i swapped that with uh the p3 so um p3 is over here to my left it's got to be on the end so it's easy to get in and out uh for the for the playfield modules and then we just 
we popped uh we popped Tron over there. So that's what I've been doing. I've also been playing some video games like te- the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game came out the beat 'em up. That was super fun. I oh, dude, why online. aren't we playing together? Dude, it's on Game Pass. Let's play. Let's fucking play. Yeah. We, I got it on PC. Can we we should be able to <laughs> Yeah, it's got cross platform. All right. And you can do up to okay. six players so we can get a whole let's, crew going. Let's let's go. Yeah. I, I beat I beat it a few times already, but I'm down anytime you want. Yeah, I'll dude, give it another run. That's awesome. Yeah, I want to I want to play Final Vendetta too. That's another beat 'em up that came out, but they're actually making it for the Neo Geo, the arcade cabinet. Oh, so I'm I'm waiting. I'm gonna play it on there when that comes out. I got Streets of Rage four too, and I've not played through that. So they that game's super like, fun like too. Beat yeah, I'm down to play that. Awesome. All right, so I had a lot of game room updates, but. Nick has even more game room updates this month. This might be the biggest game room update (laughs) of my entire podcasting career. So where to begin? You know what? Where are we going to begin, Kevin? Bring up the fucking partner things. Oh, slip that right in the middle. Yeah. Right there. Uh, Where are you? I saw you're going to skip through this, huh? Uh, Sneak attack. All right. All right. All right. All right. We want to start off by thinking our premiere Partner Penn Stadium, Penn Stadium Lighting Kips. They are app controlled, iOS, Android. Um, use pinball code Buffalo, save 10%. It, especially, listen, if you've got a, a dark game, like, you know, one of the best examples is is Deadpool. I see everybody and their brother and mother are buying that game. So that game is bagging for a uh, Penn Stadium. Highly recommend as Penn Stadium, our premier level partner. I also want to give a shout out to our other partners very quickly. Pinwoofer, got a Pinwoofer kit, make your game sound good. I'll tell you, my rush sounds god awful. Oh my god, <laughs> it sounds terrible. Stock. I cannot wait for my pinwoofer to kit to get there and save the day because it is it's it's hurting me. I'm gonna have to go to the doctor, and uh, they're gonna have to do the test where you're like, can you hear this beep and hear that beep and all that stuff just to make sure that there's something not wrong with me. It sounds that bad. All right, flipping out pinball, flipping out pinball. Once you go, Zach, you never ever go back. I can promise you, I'll never go back. All right, Zach, and now Greg, who's their tag team in this pinball industry, they're unstoppable. Nothing but good things to say. I, I swear to God, it's not until you have a, like, I'm a huge on customer service. It's not until you have an issue do you know what the person you're working with in, in any industry is worth working with them. Um, it's how they take care of you when there's an issue, and they are first class, 100%. Flip it out, pinball. Titan Pinball, OG sponsor. I just, uh, you know, Titan, I just got the, Kevin, the, the um, um, what, what, what static cling button protectors, oh, right? Yeah, I, put I put them, them on my on Toy my, Story. Yeah, on my games. Oh my God, this guy is brilliant. He saved the day. I used to use the stupid coin taker things that ruined the game. It set me down this disastrous path of powder coating. It's just ruined my life, basically. <laughs> this five dollar product would have just changed the course of my life and made me a happier man. Thank you, Titan. Thank you, thank you. He has also got silicone rings and you know stuff, but like, thank you for that product. Put it on your game. Five bucks, it's a no-brainer. It won't ruin the artwork. Do it. Do it. Pinball EDU, go to pinballraffle.org. Support a charity. Help kids with autism. And maybe you can win a pinball machine. Who knows? It's possible. Pinside.com, my favorite place to go and, and talk pinball and have people publicly shit on me. Uh, there's nothing better than that. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, stories, and this is, when, this is what happens when you skip this shit. I sent it to, uh, I sent it to Kevin the other day. Um, I asked a question. Where is the post located? Where are they putting the post on Rush? Where are they putting it? Because here's the deal. If you remember we were talking about this before, um, the pros were shipping it in the middle position. All right? When they started making the LEs, they were making it in the, the lowest position, the easiest position possible. Now, that's interesting to me. Because first of all, I think the premium LE is a little bit easier. A little, because they got some safe returns. Um, why are they, why are they doing that? I, I don't know. I never gotten a good answer. And so I asked, you know, now I, I was wondering if like maybe now they're moved the pro to the same position as premium LE. And it sounds like they haven't. Um, so I asked the question, this one asshole, uh, cause he's done this to me before he's attacked me before. I don't know why he answered the question. He's like, ah, I've, I've seen it. I, he's like, well, it's this, but I I've seen it, you know, Depends on who's on the line. They put it all over for all these games. No, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> this is not a choose your own adventure. There's not people on the line that like, you know, Frank, where do you just put it where you want? Everything else has like a diagram, but you know that post? Where, what are you feeling today? Surprise me. <laughs> it's not how it works, dude. 
<laughs> Should I put this ramp on the game? Ah, eh, you know, eh, it's not being an asshole to me. We can. I, I, you have no idea who you're messing with. Um, so after he <laughs> gets that poor answer, he goes, "Why is this even a question?" <laughs> what do you mean? Why is it a question, dude? Dude, come on. Why is because it a question? there's consistency. Like what Stern is first of all, Stern just announced their global leaderboard. Um, where you can compare your scores against other people. Now I, like look, look, I I get it, people can cheat, they could they can move the post and stuff. But I like my my thing now is I like my games at stock so I can see how my scores compare and how I'm doing on a machine. I want to play the machine the way the designer intended, period. Because we'll review Rush at some point. Okay. And if I start moving posts around, then I'm not giving an accurate, I'm not giving an accurate review, right? Because I'm playing a different game. So I want to know that. That's all. Is that, is that suitable? I don't know. But anyways, go to pinside.com. Pinside. .com. pinside. <laughs> you see how I brought that back? We were, we were still doing ads. We're not done. We're not done. All right. We got comma pinball, comma pinball for your LED lighting needs. Another OG. And then finally, Jersey Jack pinball. Make the most beautiful pinball machines on the planet. Grab their newest toy story for. Kevin Manny loves it. What else do, do you need to know? All it. right, let's let's get back to game room updates. Yeah, it's your turn. That's probably one of the best ad reads ever. That was good. Like, and I, I snuck that story <laughs> right in there. That's like a bonus edition for the people who sit and, and follow, especially the live people. You're welcome. All right. Also, follow me on follow me on, on Pinside. Go ahead and give me a follow. <laughs> Matt, Matt was telling me that he likes, if he follows me, he likes reading my posts. So there you go. <laughs> really catch the hot takes. Mostly in the yeah. Ballarama thread. That's where all the good ones happen. <laughs> I, I get the best ones here. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, this was a, a, a busy month, man. I got two pinball machines. So Mandalorian Premium came two weeks ago. And shout out to Dave Sousa, who is a, a goddamn hero. He helped me move both game, both that and Rush, which came yesterday, into my basement. He also helped me um, do some, like, uh, put some cliffies on Mando and stuff. So Dave, Dave is a hero. He's a, he's a good guy. So friend of the show. And uh, yeah, so I got two games, both of course from flipping out because I'm not fucking crazy. All right, I'm not. I'm not that masochistic. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really. I'm really loving Mando. I sold Deadpool to get Mando, and I do not miss Deadpool. I know Deadpool's like the bell of the ball right now, right? Like everybody's getting like see posts. Everybody's getting Deadpool, and it's a fine game. But I think um, I think Mando's far more interesting for for my my taste. I mean, that's just my subjective opinion. So don't don't before you go keyboard commando on me. I could probably back it up during the review. I'll get into that more. I won't I won't spoil that, but I'm I'm enjoying it. I like it. Um, I think that the premium's the way to go if you can swing it for sure. I, I was I was almost gonna get a pro, Kevin. The only reason I got the premium was that I have a pro at work and I have a pro on location. And then when I sold Deadpool, I was like, well, I you know for just X amount more, I can get the premium. Why not? You know why not get the premium when I can? Like. I, I wasn't convinced because uh, I didn't spend much time on it that would make a difference, and I, I'm definitely happy I got the premium. It's it's a uh, it's definitely the better game. Um, so okay, so I got that, and then Rush came yesterday. Oh, Rush wait, wait, we got a good question. Have you seen Mando TV series, dude? You might. Have That's to... the only way you can know if you really like the game. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is this is really playing to that guy's theory. I fucking love Mandalorian. I do ah, not like Star Wars. I, I almost hate Star Wars, and I love Mandalorian. I think Mandalorian is like one of the best TV shows ever. Um, it is really so, good. Good job, John Favreau. It's amazing what happens if you get people who can actually write stories. Um, you can just solve Muppets in your series, and it's good, apparently. <laughs> love, love me some Baby Yoda. Grogu. Um, all right, so we got derailed. So, so Rush came in, and as I was talking about last time, you know, like I was like dreading the amount of like time that needs to be invested just to get that game where it should be. So Matt Taylor, uh, shout out to Matt. Um, who's an awesome guy. Very, very good tech. So if anybody's in the Buffalo area and needs a tech hundred percent, just hire Matt, make your life easier. So he came over and um, first we had to do the, the scoop thing. So Stern, as you might know about this game had, they, they failed to, figure out how to design a scoop that doesn't break and crack the play field. I don't know how this is the thing. I don't know how this happens, but it did. So then they started putting these sandwich nubs on it, which again, this is an over, I guess, I guess it's over engineered, but poor solution. And um, it also changes the geometry of the game from where, you know, 
Korg intended it. So I, I feel like that's not the real version of the game again, trying to play that version. So um, Ninja, Ninja Pinball, Ninja Mods, Ninja Camp, whatever they're called, um, God bless them, had come up with a solution that actually works. So um, we had to take those scoop protectors off from Stern, and this was a pain in the ass. Uh, it took a considerable amount of time. And uh, you know Matt helped me with that, and so that's awesome. Now I got now I got that done. There's some other mods to like prevent chipping, and like the the VUK and the VUK also has rejects. I got to put that mod in there. Like this game, Kevin, is just like I also had a ball that's getting stuck on the time machine. Like it's just kind of like ugh, I'm not done with it. Like yeah. I'm not done with it. But Matt was over between doing those, and I and still Rush is still not dialed in. Like I could probably do the rest myself. He was over. And started working from eight o'clock at night and didn't leave until twelve thirty a.m. My lord, between Rush <laughs> crazy. and Mando, four and a half hours on brand new games. Did you do the mod where they uh, for the switch on the the inner orbit? Not even. I gotta order that. I gotta okay. investigate that more and order it. Um, I'm having a problem where it seems to not wrap around cleanly. So maybe it's hitting the switch. I don't know. The getting stuck on the time machine is annoying. Like it's just. The new inbox experience is just, uh, it's, it's annoying. It just is. So as long as you know that going in, it's okay. I think, um, you know, Zach was like, I, I messaged him. I was like, yeah, you know, I got those fix. And he's like, thanks for your patience. I was like, dude, it's, it's easy. It's easier for me to be patient with this when I know like he's got my back and we're going to get this resolved. Right. Like that's, that makes it easier to stomach, but it's still just like, I was not excited yesterday. Yesterday I knew I was getting rushed. I was not excited at all. Not, not even in the least. It's just such a, a headache. When that game it finally gets to where it needs to be, you get the sound system in, get it dialed in, and I'm actually enjoying it, then I'll, then I'll get excited and have fun. Um, maybe somebody in chat knows this. So Stern did the, like, the global leaderboard, so they just released that. And when I go to it, there's like a verified location leaderboard, which I assume is like public locations, and then there's like a other worldwide leaderboard. Um, I'm not seeing my, I put up a score today. It's not a great one, but I should be on the leaderboard, the, the one that's not verified, but I don't see it showing. So if anybody knows what I'm doing wrong, or if I'm wrong about the whole way it works, let me know. Um, what, what else? Um, what else can I say, Kevin? Did uh, I... somebody in chat wants to know what was wrong with Mando. Besides, I guess we, we talked about the upper flipper or the upper play field yeah. coil. Was there anything else you had to do that? Yeah. hundred percent. If you get, um, if you get a Mando, whether it's premium or pro um definitely get the cliffy ramp protectors for the left ramp everyone will oh, tell right. you that like within the first game that ramp is going to break which is this is like let me just say how when i say stern doesn't care it's true i mean i can i can prove this like by their actions this game has been out more than a year okay everyone knows if you go on a pinside thread that that left ramp will crack and that's annoying and stern will send you another ramp if it cracks like it's just you know nobody wants to swap this out um stern has protectors on there but they're apparently they're not long enough so cliffy made ones that are longer and that will prevent the cracking why doesn't stern just change their thing like i i understand that your first iteration there's some issues like you learn it it also shows itself really early on so i don't know how you didn't figure this out in testing but whatever but they still don't change anything right kev like this is this is the problem they don't give a shit they, 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 they really don't. It's a dollar and cents thing. They'll take care of you and send you another ramp, which is nice. But so that's annoying. So like that had to be done and you had to swap that out. I'm trying to think, I don't think there's any, anything else I did on that game to get it, um, to get it playing. Um, up until the, the flippers died, I, it's, it was good. What about the, uh, diverter at the top of that left ramp? Is, is, have you had a problem with yours? Cause I know that's kind of, Oh, on Mando. Fault. Yeah. Um, I had not had an, like of it just breaking. Yeah so far so good you probably just jinx it but like <laughs> after working on it last night i was getting some rejects where it would hit that and come down the ramp again and that might have been something that matt and i did when we were putting it back together so it remains to be seen but no i mean like the game had been playing pretty good um the left orbit is sometimes doesn't go all the way up which you remember on the pro like it was kind of like tight there or it's mm. hitting a plastic or something it's like a minor annoyance but one that i've seen before um, but again, other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I think Mandel's an awesome game. It's honestly, um, it's Dwight's best rules. I think he, I think he knocked it out of the park. I think this is like, maybe Dwight twice tries things on other games. And then this is, he crushed it. I, I love the work he did on this game. Absolutely love it. 
Um, I can't say enough good things about um, the theme integration on it and the choreography and and everything. So Dwight criticized your other games that just haven't clicked for me, but this somebody let this man know that I, I couldn't be happier with his rules. So I can't the, wait to I can't wait to have you over and we'll go through it. Yeah, I want to because I told Nick I was like I like everything about that game except the rules. So maybe maybe I'm missing something and because I yeah. like the theme, I like the art. I think the playfield's neat and interesting. Uh, the sound and uh, theme integration is really good. Um, but yeah, so the, 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 the big thing when I played it was it seemed like the encounters were super grindy, and I think they changed how some of that works, right? Um, well, yeah, so one the thing encounter, that they changed, it used to, well, it used to be like you can just spam the um, middle shot, the um, Razor Crest shot, and just do multi balls and stuff. Now, like, you're locked out of it unless you, I think you do a mode or something else. So you've got to kind of, you got to play through the game kind of evenly. Okay. Um, you were asking about, what was your question about the encounters? The though? encounters. It just seemed like when it, that was like the one like roadblock to getting to the wizard mode, the, the one time I got real close and you needed to shoot that um, center or the, the left ramp a bazillion times, get it up top, try to hit the shots. And then it's like the only thing left to do in the game. And you're putting it back up on the mini play field and trying to hit the shots and it was like just like a grind fest. I don't know if they changed that at all. Yeah, I think you always get to a point in the game where it gets a little more, a little more grindy. Never like grindy, like like um like Transformers or something. Not to the point like it. It almost like touches on the point where it could be frustrating, but it never never hits it or crosses it to where it's like it affects my appreciation for the game. Right. Okay. Um, I think the upper play field is really fun. And and again, we can talk about this a little bit because why not? We'll we'll do a review when you've had some time to play it. And we I actually think, did review it. I went well, back we'll, and looked. We'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll re-review it. I think okay. in a new light. I think it deserves it. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's um, I think on the the one problem with the pro is that when you shoot up to the encounters, it doesn't always feed to the upper flipper, which is annoying. So mm -hmm. then you got to do it again. This one, you will always get the ball and flipper because there's two flippers up there. You can hold, you can trap it, and at least you get you get a whack at the you know the targets. Right. Um, the way to counter that if you're frustrated or you're getting um, stuck up there and this is i think why the rules are really good is you can buy things through the foundry and you can buy like um light encounter if you're just you know sometimes like when you get farther into it and you're in counter three you might need like four shots just to qualify that so you can buy a thing that will make that qualified okay um or you can have a complete encounter level so if like you know, sometimes during encounter, I'll have to go up there a number of times because I keep on missing, like, a shot. And I'm starting to feel a lot where are the flippers because, like, that thing gets really vertical, which is really cool. This thing rotates, like, the, the mini play field. It gets, it gets like, really vertical. I'm going to show it, right? It gets kind of really vertical, and then it will get more flat at certain times. Um, so you can just, if you're getting stuck, you can just buy a thing at the foundry and complete it. And that will help you progress through it faster. And, and like, you could do things for getting missions lit, going through the Razor Crest multi-ball faster. So you can use that, like, I can buy things featured to progress through the game. And I think a lot of things in the Foundry are actually, like, makes you think, like, hmm, what should I get? It's not like, oh, always do this. You know, you always buy this. or all, And, like, it's different, and it also would be different in competition. So it's, it's really good. Yeah. Really, really good, in my opinion. That reminds me of Pirates when you play Pirates, and people are like, what, 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 uh, what character is the best? Well, there's not a yeah. best character. You have to... Pick the one you want to apply a particular strategy to, right? Yeah, and that's why, like, you know, Deadpool is pretty linear, like, in that sense. And this is a linear game, too. You know, like, you know, like, Deadpool is like, oh, I want to fight this character. You could choose that, but it's always always kind of plays out the same. Things like the Foundry, though, there's just more kind of decision-making. There's more there. Um, the multi-balls are way more interesting to me. Like, I, I love on the multi-balls how... You can. You're also. There's things to do on the upper play field during the multi ball. Yeah, like, that's exciting. Like, that. like yeah. trying to tra like, okay, can I trap it up there? And I got a ball down there, and like, it's just, it's just fun. And like the the um, again, like good multi ball rules. It's not like okay, you're in multi ball, shots are lit, and then you hit all shots, and you hit a super jackpot. Like one of the um, multi balls in Mandalorian is um, you hit shots, and you're building up a super jackpot, but the super jackpot's only lit when you're down to one ball. Oh, like, that's 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 cool right because yeah. then it becomes mm -hmm. a moment yeah. you're like oh shit it's it's flashing the game's going crazy am i going to collect it that's cool that yeah. is so there's just again there's there's more there's more there for someone like me yeah it reminds me of some of the stuff i've been enjoying in toy story 
Pat Lawler is always great about having those cross play field shots when you're in multi-ball. You're, so you're like, you get to a certain point in, in a multi-ball and it's like, oh, I need to hit this cross, cross play field shot with the upper flipper. So I got to trap him up down low and try to hit rip that spinner. Or uh, there's one, the, the road trip multi-ball where you're trying to like pop it back into that far left shot, hit the drop target and then put it back in there for the mega jackpot. So I can actually complete the mode and not just, um, not just start it. So yeah, it's, I, I love those, like this little, like the stuff that makes it more interesting and it's not just a bunch of lit shots. Right. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, Tio Pen had Joe chair says Mando rules seem very simple. I don't think that's, I don't think that they're simple. I think that they're straightforward. Like, I think you kind of always know what to do for the most part. The only weird thing is that the, um, the kind of like at the beginning, like nothing's kind of lit, like in terms, it's not obvious if you don't know what's going on, how to start a mode. That is weird. I f- you'd think it's they would have really, done something by now. It's a really weird design decision, which I don't understand. But other than that, the game is like very straightforward, which is like playing Rush. I have no idea what's going on. It's like Rush seems like everything's always kind of lit. I don't, it's not intuitive. Like I'm looking forward to that complexity and digesting it. But again, like I wouldn't say Mandel rules are simple. There's a, there's a lot there, but it's, it's pretty straightforward that somebody can step up and be like, okay, now I need to hit this shot and that's what's going on. Yeah, I think that I think that's a plus in design when you're you know you're presenting the basics of the game. They should be pretty straightforward what you need to do, and then leave it to the advanced player or the homeowner who's had it for a while to kind of uncover the other layers as you as you dig into a game. That that's good game design in my opinion. Yeah, and then and the foundry is where you can kind of get creative on how you want to approach it, and like the multipliers are like how you want to push your luck on certain shots. And a lot of the modes are like you can exit out of this mode, or you can keep on hitting this shot and build up more value in the mode. Again, like. That's a cool feature. You know, mm-hmm. Deadpool doesn't have that. It's just like I hit up, 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 and then I'm done. I mean, Deadpool does have like if I go into a mode and I have a guy I get 2x scoring and stuff. So it's a little bit of that. But, um, yeah, it's kind of it's, – it's in many ways linear and then other ways like open-ended that as you're going on an adventure, giving, you, giving the player's decision-making and options and, and push your luck a little bit. Yeah, I was playing it at James's house, and he was he was showing me how the multipliers work. I was like, "Oh, that's cool! I didn't realize that with that the target on the right." Yeah, um, I can build that up and bring that into your multi balls and stuff like that. So that's cool too. Yeah, and it's straightforward. It's not anything too crazy. Right. Awesome. Um. So w- was that it? That's all the that's all the game room updates you got. Two I, new pinball I, machines. I, what? God, I'm, I'm probably forgetting some. Oh, oh, the powder coating. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. I got it, dude. I got it. Where is it? Okay. I am I am so fucking pissed off, dude. Uh I'm uh so let me tee this up. So I thought that Rush Premium would look awesome with white powder coating, so I went with cosmic white and I made the mistake of having somebody loco do it. This person this is a shop, right? It's not a person, but this the shop um did my Led Zeppelin and I thought it came out pretty good and now I'm now I'm in doubt of like that. But um, Kevin's got it on the screen. I just posted on Pinside this morning so you can go and see the shit show. And those are just some of the pictures. I could have posted more. Um, it looks like I took these parts and spray painted them out, out back like in two seconds. Um, look at that. Oh, that line is terrible. Look at that. <clears throat> God. Dude, $333 for this garbage. I'm, gonna, I'm not naming the place that did this. Not, there's not a lot of powder coatings in Buffalo. I'm going to try to work it out with them. Like, what? Um, you know, uh, what is it called? God, why am I forgetting this? Um, Pinball Refinery. He does powder coating. He didn't do this. God knows. Um, but I reached out to him and he was commenting on it. He's like, look, they didn't, they didn't do a good job stripping it off. You can see that you need to strip that stuff off. And I'm looking at the invoice and like, they charged me for stripping. Like, so they were supposed to, they were supposed to, that, that's where it ends. They were supposed to do that process. You can just tell that they just didn't give a shit and they returned it to me. So gonna try to fix that but that's uh it's really it's actually really bothering me right now because i just i feel like i got taken yeah that's annoying hopefully it works out for you but i guess we're uh we're yeah he was saying i was reading through the thread and um pinball refinery was saying that white over black is particularly hard and you know he strips his stuff down to bare metal before he powder coats any any white because he understands it's so hard so i guess there's um you know anybody who um specializes in something is going to know the ins and outs a little bit better than somebody who's just a general practitioner in this in this way so this guy knows pinball 
uh yeah. pinball, pinball refinery knows what it takes to, to get these parts looking good so i mean this is a legit shop like they yeah. should know this they feel like they were just like skimping and like there you go like hope you're happy with it and i know who, they, who looks at that don't... and is like oh that's good let's go yeah it, it, well exactly right kevin like yeah. it's just obviously bad it's not like nick picking it's just obviously bad and and where pinball refinery says like when you just half ass it and you don't do the proper stripping on it of taking off the existing powder coat, then what ends up happening is that in the long run, that's going to chip. So can't wait for that to happen on my Led Zeppelin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, less, lesson learned. I mean, um, people talk highly of, of Robert Stone and Pinball Refinery on Pinside. You know, if I do this again, it will be through and then probably Pinball Refinery. He's been very helpful and uh, I'll be happy to report back. But yeah, it's just, it's just, um, Lesson learned, man. If you if you're gonna do the powder coating, you might as well go to the trusted sources on Pinside. Um, you know, I didn't want to ship things because there's additional costs, like in that. And I like thought, why can't this person handle it? They have good reviews on um, Google and stuff. They're like a legit place. This is, I don't know, I don't know. Try figuring it out. <laughs> I'm glad you like Nick picking. Nick, yeah. Nick picking. <laughs> That's good. Um. All right, couple a couple local updates. We uh, wrapped up our team league, so we we did our uh, our team league a little differently this this time around. Um, thank you, Matt, for for heading up, leading the charge, and bringing that back. Um, he's like, I love team league. Let's let's do it again. And we're like, all right, let's do it. And we we ran it over the course of a month. Every Wednesday, we used to go every other Wednesday. Um, we figured this would be better because we were getting into summer, and folks like in Buffalo like to make the most of summer while we have it. And um, my team was the was the winner. That's why I brought this up. But, you know, my team won. So uh, technically, Nick was on my team, but he never actually played. So, um, you know, th- thanks for nothing, Nick. Appreciate that. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> my son made a comeback to Team League, though, so that was fun. He played on our, our team, and it, it was fun to get out there and play with him. Um, and we're going to be – got to start thinking about Fall League. So usually we announce that during the summer. Um, so if you're in the Buffalo area and you're interested in joining – Check out buffalopinball.com. Sign up for the mailing list there. I know we have some some huge mailing list fans out there. They very look forward to our uh, occasional emails from the, from the league. Sign up for that. And uh, when we open up the um, sign-ups for, for Home League, uh, it'll go there, and you'll, you'll have a chance to get in on it. <laughs> Tio Pinna is also call, calling for the North American Pinball Battle. Hopefully we'll be able to bring that back. Yeah, I had to renew my um my passport and stuff and then uh yeah, we'll see. Life is life has been really busy, so we'll see. I I'd know. like to do that. I it's feel fun. like that's a fun event. Like this weekend I've got like two family events and and you know, we're going to a concert next week and <laughs> it's like yeah. life is finally catching back up w- from the pandemic, I think. So, uh yeah, that makes things difficult, but um I was also thinking about doing maybe a, a little tournament here we could talk about that. Uh, offline while we uh while we prepare that so but if you're in the area uh keep on the lookout for that all right i think it's review time let's talk about uh let's talk about no fear we'll be right back let's go It's showtime. It's time to talk about No Fear. It was released by Williams in 1995. It's a Steve Ritchie design with art by Greg Ferris and Pat McMahon. Software lead was Matt Coryell and sound by Dan Forden and Vince Ponarelli. Uh, Pricing, according to Pinside, is in the $3,700 range. That's probably a little bit low, but I have seen some in that range, so so that's a fair price for it, I think. Um, So, yeah, let's, let's talk about No Fear. This is a game that I used to own. Uh, so Nick, you've played it a bunch at my house and at Pinburg and stuff over the years. Um, solid game. Let's, let's kick it off by talking about the art. So like we said, art was by Greg Ferris and Pat McMahon. I think it's, it's really nicely done hand-drawn art. It's a, you know, extreme sports theme. So if you're a a nineties kid, you remember no fear t-shirts being all the rage at, at one point. Um, so it's, it's very extreme looking with fire and, uh, you know, the backlash has, 
you know, the Valvoline uh, race car with fire coming out of the back and that guy's head exploding in fire and uh, lightning and, and huge waves. And this dude's got a sweet mohawk and look at all that. It's, it's very 90s, very extreme. There's this guy jumping out of airplanes on a, on a snowboard or whatever the hell that is. Um, rock climbing, you know, flames on the cabinet. There's, there's skulls, flaming skulls. Um, so if all of that sounds up your alley, then then you might enjoy the art package of, of No Fear. Nick, what do you think about the art on this this game? Yeah, I mean, um, is it, it's, it's not bad. It doesn't really do anything for me, per se. Maybe it's the theme. Maybe it's the colors. It's not a, I don't think it's particularly attractive um, overall kind of package when you just, when you just kind of look at it. But it'd be hard-pressed to point out anything particular that's bad about it, if that makes sense. It's very, it's very orangey. There's a lot of orange to it. This one in particular that I have on the screen has orange uh, powder coating and orange wire form, so that in- increases the the orange overload. But um, even default, there's a lot of orange, yellow, and black. Those are kind of the the prevailing colors. And then there, there's there's some blue pops of blue, and you know the lanes are all pretty pretty nicely defined as far as like where you need to shoot and things like that. So so that helps. Um, yeah, I mean that that's your basic no fear art package. Um, the sound on it is pretty good from what I you know I haven't played it in a while. It's been a few years since I owned it, but the uh, it's got a lot lots of a lot of rock guitar music. Um, the skull, uh, it's probably uh, Dan Forden doing the voice of the skull if I had to guess. Um, uh, but he's the one that says play better and all that. Uh, uh, there's a lot of call outs. It's who do you said? I think that's Dan Fortin that does that, doesn't it? Or is dude, you think that Steve. Steve, Steve Ritchie does the skull? Dude, hundred percent. Okay. Why would Steve <laughs> Ritchie not do a voice in the game that he's working on? That's Come true because he, he does yell at you. He goes hundred percent. So yeah, that's that's a hundred percent Steve. Okay, my bad. I bet my all my NFTs on it. <laughs> Wait, that's not much I of a wager. I don't have that shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, rock music. Uh, good callouts. I don't know. I, the, the the music fits the theme, I think. What, what do you think? Yeah, it's good. So I was I was coughing, so I was on mute. Oh, okay. That's all I've been doing these days. Um, yeah, the the sound is 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 good for its time and appropriate for the theme. You know, I feel like I'm ready to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I like when it is cool when you when you shoot the the jump ramp when you. So one of the playfield features we'll talk about later is the uh, the jump where you shoot it to the upper loop. And then you could jump it, and if it, after you hit a couple in a row, the the skull starts screaming and stuff like that. So it's good. It does a good job of getting you hyped, which that's what you want out of a of a pinball machine, I think. Um, toys. Um, so the so there's the skull is like the main toy on the play field, but it's a it's not a toy that interacts directly with the balls. There's a uh, I think I have a shot of it here. Um, you can see underneath there's a dr- uh, there's a scoop that you shoot it into and then the skull talks and he moves his mouth, which is cool. And his eyes light up. And there's kind of a side angle on him. So he's a, he's a cool toy. Um, and then the other like main gimmick of the game is the, the jump ramp, uh, which you shoot the left ramp and it feeds to a, uh, magnet accelerated ramp in the back. So if you don't hit it quite fast enough, it boosts your ball and, and gets it up to that upper flipper. And then you can shoot it across. And there's actually a, a little, uh, a little jump, uh, let's see if I got a a better angle on that. You can you can kind of see. Well, not really there, right there. Um, it jumps across from the the plastic to the the metal part of the of the ramp. So that's that's a cool cool gimmick. I like that a lot. Um, other than that, it's it's pretty straightforward. Steve Ritchie layout. You got your your far left saucer like he likes to do. A bunch of lanes, bunch of bunch of uh, two orbits, a couple ramp shots. Um, the, just to the, there's a little inner orbit that shoots around the skull. You can see there, um, just to the left of that, there's a, a lane that ends in a scoop where you shoot the, um, there's a drop target that stands up and you shoot past that to start your modes and things like that. You also do your ball locks there. Um, um, so those are, that's, that's like the main, the main play field features and toys. What do you think? What do you think about the toys on this game? I think the skull's kind of cool. You know, it's there's there's not a ton of toys. It's, just, it's pretty much the skull. But I, again, I think it's theme theme appropriate. Um, 
seems kind of light in terms of stuff, especially for the time period where the, I think there was definitely cooler toys in, in, in games of that time period. So it, it, in that respect, I feel like this is a, a toy of today that you would get and you just like shut up and be happy with it. But <laughs> in the 90s for Williams, it's, it's kind of lacking. Yeah, I agree with that. When you, you know, you think about stuff like other, even other games Steve Ritchie was doing, like Star Trek Next Generation, you know, they had two cannons and all this other, you know, cool stuff on it that, um, you know, Bally Williams was kind of crushing it at that point as far as like stuff on the play field and interactive, unique interactive mechs. And this, this doesn't have that, um, but it's got a fun, fast layout. Um, display and lighting. Um, nothing nothing really you know that's kind of like of the times right the the display and lighting on uh, the lighting in particular on games of this era were just kind of whatever you know it, you, you got your inserts you got your gi maybe a couple flashers and you know you're not getting toy story or gnr level rgb leds right you're getting you're getting lighting that does the job um the display and dot work was pretty good not great on this uh, i don't remember being particularly wowed by any of the the display work or animations on the, on the DMD. Uh, Nick, am I missing anything on that? There might be something I'm not thinking of. No, nothing, nothing stands out in, in particular on this game to me. I mean, it, it's funny when we talk about like lighting and stuff on, on the nineties games, most of our, are not anything that stays fresh in my mind. I mean, it's been a number of years since I played this game. So, you know, full disclosure, I've, I've not owned it like Kevin. I've played it enough in tournaments, but there's, there's, nothing that i would want to wax poetic about it in terms of that there's also nothing bad it's it tends to i think it tends to be a darker game too this might be a game it's like you talk about pin stadiums i bet it would look a hell of a lot better if it had a set on that you know some games are just like they beg for it yeah like games of this era you know even like having the the flashers going off on on pin stadiums and stuff would really kind of like take the lighting to a next level i think i, I think Games from the '90s have the potential to do light shows and moments. Like I think of the the multi ball start on Adam's Family, right when you know everything shuts down and it goes boom, 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 boom and it leads to this that's big cool. yeah moment or uh, like Power Down and Johnny Mnemonic. That's a really cool like integrated light show kind of kind of time. But um, yeah, for for the most part, like your your uh, average gameplay lighting is pretty pretty average on this these this era of game. Uh, this game in particular, I think, for sure. Um, why don't you give your thoughts on the gameplay? Uh, since I've been doing a lot of the talking, what do you think about the, the um, gameplay on this yeah. game? Yeah, it's 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 pretty fast. There's tight shots that are are, are farther back. Um, it's pretty pretty fun to shoot. I think the upper play field's pretty fun when you go up there. Like being able to ramp a loop after loop is 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 fairly satisfying. Um, not maybe not necessarily the greatest upper play field in the world, but but certainly a good one. All right, it's it's hard for me to say anything bad about it, and it doesn't it doesn't slow down the game. It doesn't feel like it doesn't exist up there. It feels like it feels like legitimate there for a reason, and it's well balanced in terms of going up there and doing other things in the game. Yeah, it's it's, it's a fast flowing like Steve Ritchie layout, right? You're gonna you're gonna hit a lot of shots. You're gonna get the ball back to the flipper quickly. Um, you, you're just gonna be always have the ball in motion. Uh, and that's cause that's the, the kind of g games that he designed. So, um, when I first played this, it was after, so I had played this at Pinburg or Papa, one of the two it was at the pot, old Papa headquarters when I played it first. And it reminded me sort of, of Star Trek. I mean, not, not totally, but I was like, I got like kind of some Star Trek vibes, the stern Star Trek, um, uh, in particular, cause I know there are multiple, Star Trek's over the years, but yeah, I was like, oh, this is kind of Star Trek-ish, which makes sense because it's a, a Steve Ritchie game. You know, it's got the, like those those arrow inserts, which are ev evocative of, of Star Trek, and uh, just that that fast fast quick layout. Um, I think this is a a good bang for the buck kind of game, and we'll get into that. Um, I know folks are always looking for reasonably priced games in in today's market, and I think this is one of those games where you can. You can have a lot of fun, get a cool Steve Ritchie layout, and and not pay a fortune for it. So I think that's that's one of the one of the best uh, things this game has going for it. Uh, gameplay wise, it's not super deep. Um, it's got um, you know you basically you progress through your modes to get to the uh, there's there's like these three. Let me see if I, I forget what their names are. Uh, the three like mini wizard modes. 
where is it? No Limits, Meet Your Maker, and Fear Fest, I think, are the three of them. It's hard to see on these pictures. Um, so it's cool that it's got, like, these multiple mini wizard modes that you can get to along the way. Um, but it's not particularly hard to, to do it either. Um, so I think, and I think that's, that's pretty standard for this era of game too, because, you know, you weren't getting super deep rule sets in games in the nineties, but you were getting, if you're looking for a mode based game where there's like a wizard mode at the end, uh, versus something like say, uh, a, um, fish tales or something like that, where it's more of a, more of a, like go for a big score kind of game, then I think no fear might be, might be up your alley. Um, it's got payback time, which is another Steve Ritchie, you know, go to uh, gameplay feature where if you, you know, if you ramp out, you'll eventually get to a quick scoring uh, uh, payback time, which we first saw in Terminator 2. So uh, things like that. So it's got a couple different ways that you can approach it if you want to go uh, from, from a score perspective. When I was hosting league and, and tournaments, when I owned this game, that's what kind of made this interesting. It's like, oh, strategically, uh, how, do I want to try to go for multi-ball? Do I want to go for, for payback time? Do I want to play through the game and kind of progress through the uh, through the modes and kind of score that way? Because there's decent scoring in the modes too. Uh, but if you can get to the super jackpots and the and the multi-balls, that's it's a good way to go to trying to hit that that cross play field uh, you know, jump ramp during the during multi-ball is a, a fun way to fun way to go. Um what are your thought thoughts on the gameplay and rules on this? Yeah, how much is this game going for right now? Anywhere from like the the mid threes and up, you know, thirty five yeah. and up probably. This is a good game for the people who are like, oh, rules are complex, right? Like this, this is like your crowd, right? Like I just like the simple, like shoot this and that's that. This is the game for you, right? Like if if that's what you know, scratches your itch, get it. I think, um, you know, there's. There's not a lot to it, right? Like this is a game for almost 30 years ago and we've come a long way and I think we demand more and made a lot of progress in terms of just what we could do rules wise. So for me, like I, I don't get really interested in Williams games that you had this game, Calvin, I would go and I play it a couple times and then walk away and be done with it. And never, I wouldn't be thinking about it the rest of my day. You know, I wouldn't be yeah. like, there's really no like too many strategies or anything that you can implement kind of pure pinball you play it and um i think it's a good game for maybe somebody who wants a, a pinball machine that's a you know more modern one right that's not it's got dmd at least um but it's just like listen i want something i don't want to break the bank i just want to have a pinball machine in my home this is this is probably a good choice to have this is my son's this is my son's all-time favorite pinball machine he will never let me live down the fact that i sold this game so well, dude, he's gonna get a job next year. You could you could buy his own. <laughs> I told him that's your life goal, like like it was for Adam's family when when me went for with me when I was a kid. It's like that was the game I always wanted. So there you go. You can set set your slates on a no fear down the line. I wouldn't be opposed to owning it again if you know if he if he would enjoy playing it. I probably wouldn't play it much. Um, I sold it back then because Ghostbusters was coming out, and I wanted to to get some funds together for Ghostbusters, so it went towards that, which turned into um hobbit which turned into toy Story. So <laughs> that's the journey of my no fear um uh, uh which i'm i'm happy with where we're at i would much rather have toy story than, <laughs> than no fear um uh, but it's a solid game i think you can't go wrong if you're looking for something in this price point um you don't despite what other folks might think you don't have to be an extreme for sports fan to enjoy no fear <laughs> you can you can you can enjoy this game uh, even if you don't watch NASCAR, or if you if you haven't jumped out of an airplane, or if you're not an extreme uh, 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 water skier or whatever the other modes are, you can you can have fun with this game. You can you can enjoy it. If you want a fast paced game with some some fun rules and uh, it's got it doesn't take itself too seriously, then I think I think you'd enjoy a No Fear. Um, as far as last ability, I don't think this game has. A lot of last ability didn't last super long in my collection. Um, but like I said, you know, it's it's one of those games where you're going to have fun with it for a while. You're probably going to um, get to the wizard mode. It's not super tough to get there. And then you'll be ready to move on. But in the meantime, you're probably going to have a good time. Um, I think, you know, Nick was talking to that as far as last ability in his comments too. Like, you know, play it a couple times and, and, and you're good. Uh, if it's in your house, you'll play it more and get to the wizard mode and then you'll be... You'll be moving on. 
Um, so, all right, let's go to our, uh, our ratings. Oh, that's not our ratings. I don't, I didn't have that queued up. I'll just bring it up over here. Um, I have to give this the ranking scale. Nick, what are, what are your thoughts on last ability? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of last ability for, you know, somebody who can relate to where I'm at at a player. Um, it's just, there's just really nothing interesting there in terms of rules and i think that's what it comes down to last ability are the are the rules there is the challenge there but you can have great rules but if you're beating the game every time you step up to it then then i think it's poor last ability um so you know you're dealing with the 90s rule set from 95 uh it just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't keep right i i keep on wanting to kind of push the limits of of rules that's why i i think rules just get better over time and just like my description earlier of talking about why I like Mando better than Deadpool, I think there's just more there and the rules are more interesting. Um, and uh, I can see like Mando lasting longer. Um, remains to be seen. So yeah, the last ability is pretty low on this one for, for someone like myself. Um, again, for, the, I, for people who just want simple rules and super straightforward and don't care about that, then you know, your mileage may vary. All right, so the score key is uh, zero to two is a burn it, three to five expensive nightlight, six to eight solid game, nine to ten get your wallets out. Where would you where would you put this game in the in the grand scheme of things? I'll give it a six. I mean, it's a solid game, right? And the low end of a solid game. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's a six. It's a, uh, you know, you're gonna have fun with it. It's a, it doesn't have anything particularly bad that I was like, oh, I hate this part of this game, but there's nothing there that really stands out as this is. Oh, this is amazing, exceptional. Like you're not gonna find this in any other pinball machine. Um, you're gonna have fun. You're gonna you're gonna shoot the ball around, you're gonna get to the wizard mode eventually, and then you're gonna be done with it. <laughs> that's that's my thoughts on on no fear. All right. All right. That's good. That's we good agree. You. Awesome. Yeah, well they've been not playing for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, meant to... again. Again, like this is a good like, hey, I want to get into pinball. Right? What's a game to get? Like, grab a no fear. You know, this is like is a, I think it's a good like you're early in your pinball journey. You don't have the. You don't want to run out and buy a, a new Stern or something like that. Grab one of these bad boys. Yeah, enjoy it for I agree. a while, and then and then save your money and you know, work your way up. Yep, turn it into something else. Enjoy it for a while, and then and then move on up. All right, so that's gonna do it for another episode of Brody Even Talk Pinball. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you. Um, if if you haven't yet, uh, be sure to follow us on all of our social media. It's at the bottom here. It's uh we're on Buff- at buffalopinball.com. We're also Buffalo Pinball on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, if you want to see archives of the old uh, shows and things you may have missed. All 68 other episodes of Brody Even Talk Pinball live there. Um, You can also follow us on Facebook, join the group, uh, join the chat, or uh, get in on the Discord and uh, and talk about pinball stuff over there. Um, You can email us if you prefer to uh, drop some feedback via email, talkpinball at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitch and use your Prime subscription over there if you want to support the channel um, or uh, your standard uh, Twitch subs are uh, appreciated there as well. Uh, you can support us on PayPal, buffalopinball at gmail.com if you want to send a little something via PayPal or you can drop a review if you want a, a nice way to uh, uh, provide some feedback, for support the show, tell a friend, pass the show along to uh, one of your friends and say, hey, I appreciate this show. If you're just tuning in and you missed the show, don't worry. It'll be archived here on YouTube or on Twitch. It'll also be on YouTube. It's also on anywhere you get your podcasts if you want to listen to it in in podcast form. I also have been uploading it as video on, um, uh, what's that one? Uh, Spotify. Spotify also supports video podcasts. So I've been putting this up in video format so you can listen to it in audio format there or watch the video uh, feed there as well. So that's going to do it for another month. Get out there, do some grilling, uh, hang out with your friends, go outside, go America. Dude, come play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with me and Kevin. Let's, let's do this. Let's organize this in, in, uh, in, in discord. Six Six player player TMNT. TMNT. Like it's 1989. (laughs) Let's go. All right. We'll see you guys Uh, in the meantime. So tune in later tonight. I'm going to do an unboxing of all this stuff. On Twitch, oh people There's love seeing stuff come out of more a box. Exciting. Yeah. Oh, uh, what is it's killing me? What's in the box? Look at all I the just, stuff in the box. If only it will just come out. 
There's oh, stuff in a God. box. It's got to come out of the box. Oh, God. I know what it looks it. like, but I still want to see it just emerge from the box like it's giving birth to a pinball machine. So, I'm going to go have some hot dogs and hamburgers, and we come back, and we're going to unbox the stuff. It needs to be so good. Um, and then Monday night, if all goes well, I'll be playing Weird Al again, so I'm really looking forward to that. So You're a Weird Al. Your face is a Weird Al. Yeah, so do you want me to, I got do you him. Want me to, do you want oh, fucking hurt a little bit yeah i can't believe you just did that <laughs> publicly um do you want me to come over on monday and and uh oh yeah we should see if uh, patrick and matt want to come out too let's bro show the shit out let's of make this. it a party let's do this all right weird I'm al bro, bro show maybe on monday all right it'll, yeah. it'll be uh, supporting the uh, celebrating the fourth of july with weird al what could be more american than that all right until next time we'll see you bye